first thing we need to look at with the counting, do you know your rules? Okay, you need rules when looking at accounting. So there's six rules that you need to remember, and then you need to apply them. So these are types of accounts. Okay, so you get like sales, you get rent, you get land and buildings, you get equipment, you get stationery. Okay, you get all these different accounts. You need to know what they are. Okay, so the first thing that you need to look at, rules, definitions, and the debits slash credits. Right, so definition number one, asset. What makes an asset an asset? A resource controlled by the business giving future economic benefits. Okay, examples. Give me some examples of assets. Um, land and yes, land and buildings. Vehicles, equipment, etc. Okay, all of those things are assets. Right, they're assets because they meet the definition. Okay, so if you know what the definition is, then you'll know what rules to apply. Okay, that's something that you need to know. Okay, the opposite of an asset is a liability. Okay, something else that you need to know. Definition wise, obligation. That gives rise to an outflow of economic benefits. Okay, maybe just to add the word inflow here. All right, so benefits coming in or benefits going out. If benefits going to go out, it's a liability. Can okay, remember liabilities are bad? Okay, because there's going to be a future outflow. Okay, so if you take out a loan, what do you have to pay in the future? Um, double. Not double, it could be double, but you'd have to pay interest and you have to pay back what you took out. Okay, so the bank gives you a loan, you have to pay back the principal, which is what you got from the bank, and the interest. So a loan would be a liability. Creditors, right, suppliers that you buy stock from, that you don't have to pay. Okay, so if I supply you a stock and I give you stock today and you've got you've got to pay me in the future, how will you view me? You'll be you'll view me as a creditor because you owe me. Right? You could put debtors here, that's the opposite. Debtors is an asset. But that's the opposite. So now you've sold something to me. Okay, if you if you've sold something to me on credit, I owe you. So are you going to get something from me in the future? Yes, I have to pay you. Okay, so a debt would be an asset, a credit would be a liability. But it all comes back to those definitions. Okay, if you know what the definitions are, then you'll know how to treat whatever the specific account is. Okay, you get four others, income, increase in benefits, expense, these are easy ones, decrease in benefits. Okay, income is good, right? Because you get something, it's favorable, it's positive. Example there, sales. Maybe services rendered. Expenses, things that we're going to have to, inverted commas, lose. Okay, things that we don't get. Things that we have to give up, basically. Right, so things that we would lose out on, maybe rent expense. Okay, you have to pay it, or rent paid. Wages. wages would be an expense for the business, because they've got, they've got to pay their employees. Other things, water and electricity. Stationery. Okay, stationery is an expense, because you use it up. Okay, it's a decrease in benefits. Okay, the pens and pencils that you use. Okay, if I use a pen, the ink is going to run out. If I use a pencil, the lead's going to run out. Okay, those things basically run out once you've used it. Okay, that's something to consider. No problem. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll actually calculate later, but it's fine. Thank you so much for bringing it. Okay.
All right, so these are the four accounts. There's still two more, capital and then drawings. Okay, you're not going to look at other forms of capital. You're not going to look at other forms of drawings. Capital is capital, drawings is drawings. The owner gives or the owner takes. That's something to consider. Okay, so if you're giving something to your business, it's capital. If you're taking something from your business, it's drawings. Okay, and those are the four rules. Well, six rules. These two are easy because they're not going to give you different types of capital or drawings. They're only going to give you those ones. Those are the ones that you actually need to study and you need to learn. Okay, so if you know what these definitions are, then you'll know what you're dealing with. Right, something else to consider? The rules in terms of debits and credits. Okay, so assets. We just spoke about what an asset is. Now we need to remember the rule. Debit plus, credit minus. The liability is the opposite. So here you have a debit minus and a credit plus. Okay, those, these are two rules. The asset rule liability rule Why do I need the rules? Well, the rules help with interpreting transactions. Okay, so what actually happens? Right, then you've got income and then you've got expenses. Okay, for income, you've got this one. For expenses, you've got that one. Okay, and then you've got two more, capital and drawings. Um, I actually want to swap these around. Let's swap them around. Okay. Because you'll see these ones all have debit plus and these all have credit minus, credit plus, capital. Okay, so you've got this one for that one, you've got this one for that one. Okay, and those are the rules. You've got drawings, you've got capital, and that's the rule that I have to apply. Okay. Right, so you need to know definitions. So in other words, step number one, when you look at accounting transactions. First thing you need to do, what is the keyword? Okay, when I say keyword, I'm referring to the accounts. Okay, step number two, What is the accounting element? Okay, what do I mean by that? Asset, liability, income, expense, capital, drawings. Okay, when I look at keyword, that could be like bank or equipment or sales. Right, that'll come from the question. The accounting element, what am I dealing with? Step three. What is happening to it? What is the effect? Okay, the effect will either be an increase or a decrease. And the last step, debit or credits. That's the last step. And this step comes from those rules. Right, so when you, when you look at questions, there are going to be different types of questions. Okay, but you need to be able to interpret the transaction. Okay, that's the first step. But right, before you can do anything else, you need to know how to apply the rules. So, just a simple example. Cash sales of 100. All right, what is this? This is a transaction. That could have taken place on day one. It doesn't matter what, when it took place. Okay? If I have a cash sale, let's follow the steps. Step number one. Get the keyword. 
or keywords actually. They are they are always going to be two because every debit has a credit. So we're looking for the keywords. What stands out here? Cash and sales. Right, those are the keywords. So cash. Cash, the right word is bank. Sales is sales. Okay, so those are the keywords. Bank is the keyword. Sales is the keyword. Sales is sales. There's no special word for it. Okay, then we're looking at the transaction. What happened? Cash sales of 100. Do I know what the elements are? Let's test you. What is bank? Which one? Is bank an asset, a liability, income, expense, capital drawings? It must be one of the six. Bank is an income. There's no increased benefits. Okay, bank is something that you have. Okay, do you have a bank account? Is it your bank account? Is it a resource to you? Okay, so there's the definition. It's an asset. Okay, so bank is an asset. Okay, there's step number two. Sales. What is sales? Which of the uh, six? Sales. Is sales an asset, a liability, income, expense, capital drawings? Yes, yeah, sales is an income. Okay, when you sell something, do you get some benefits? Yes. Yes. Okay, you get money or you get somebody owing you. Okay, that's something that's beneficial to you as the business. Right, so step number two, do you know what sales are? Yes, it's income. Okay, then the next step is looking at the effect. Right, what is going to happen to your bank if you're selling? What's the effect? If, I'm not. if you're selling, what's going to happen to your bank? Yes. Okay, but is your bank going to increase? Yes. Yes. If you sell something to me and I'm going to pay you cash for it, is your bank account going to go up? Yes. It definitely will. All right, so there's the next step. Increase. Income. Do you have more sales or less sales when you sell? You've got more sales, so this will also increase. Okay, there's step number three. What is the effect? Okay, so the effect is complete. Right, then we just need to look at the last step, debit or credit. Okay, that's the easiest step. Why? Because this step uses the rules. Right, so there's the workings. These are workings for the, the transaction. Okay, the interpretation. Right, if you know what, what is happening, then you can do whatever you want with this. You can do an accounting equation. You can do an income statement. You can do a balance sheet. You can do a statement of financial position. That's the new name for it. Um, you can do... Journals, ledger, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, you have to know how to interpret the transactions correctly. Okay, the last step is the easy step because you've got the working, now you just need to apply the rules. Okay, where's my rules? Here. Okay, there's my working. What did my working say? Bank is an asset, the asset is increasing. So, where do assets increase? Go look at your rule. Where do assets increase? On the debit side. Okay, debit is the left, credit is the right. That's all. Okay, that's the only meaning for debit and credit. Debit just means left, credit just means right. And that's it. 
Okay, so you either have a debit or, or left, or you have a credit, which is the right. So if I look at the asset, where is the increase on this side? Debit. So assets increase on the debit side. Okay, I got that because of the rule. The rule tells me what to do. Okay, the next one. Sales is an income. The income is increasing. Income increase. Where does income increase? On this side. So, credits. And there you go. You've got everything that you need now in order to do whatever application you're in, uh, that you're required to do. Okay, sales will always be income. Bank will always be an asset. Okay, disclosure. Later on, okay, you asked about this. Income statements and balance sheets. Okay, the right words for or names for these things. Statement. I don't know if your textbook is still old or new, but it doesn't matter. Okay, a state, an income statement is called a statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. Okay, that's the new name for it for, well, according to the IFRS. Uh, let's use a different color. Okay. That's the income statement. Okay, then you have the balance sheets. Oh, I've got red. Okay, it doesn't matter. We'll just use this color. Okay, and the balance sheet's new name Statement of financial position. Okay, that's what you've got. All right, so when you have disclosure, income statement, balance sheets. Okay, these are financial statements. These are two of the four main financial statements. Okay, this actually only comes up right at the end of the process. Okay, so... Depending on how much of the accounting process you have to do, you might go through the whole process or you might not. It all depends. Okay, but the accounting process or the accounting cycle, that's what they call it, comprises of six steps. Step number one, the transaction or the transactions, which is basically what I said here. This is a transaction. Okay, that's step number one. Transactions are recorded on source documents. Okay, so invoices, till slips, all of that stuff, right? After that, you put that in a journal. Then that goes to a ledger. Then you'll have a trial balance. And then lastly, you'll have the financial statements. Okay, so your main focus was mainly on this. Okay, the statements. Okay, which is actually here, right at the end. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at now. But you obviously need to understand what the process is. So you should be given a trial balance. Okay, if you're given a trial balance, what is the trial balance? What is this? It's just a list of accounts. Okay, so on the trial balance, you will see different things. So, for example, I'll make a trial balance here. Okay, a trial balance, depending on how they give it to you, should be split into two sections. Okay, there should be a, a financial position section. Okay, which is the balance sheet section, basically. Okay, and what does the balance sheet section have? Well, assets and liabilities. Right, you'll also see capital. Okay, so in this particular section, in the balance sheet section, I'm going to see assets, I'm going to see liabilities, I'm going to see capital, and I'm going to see drawings. Okay, those are four of the six rules. 
Remember, we started off by discussing what the six rules are. Okay, assets, liabilities, capital, and drawings. You will see them here in the financial position. Okay, section of the trial balance. Okay, what does the trial balance look like? There's a debit column and there's a credit column. Okay, this you might even have seen in some of your questions. Okay, and then they'll give you a whole bunch of accounts. Right, so I'm just going to give you a few. Let's give you the ones that you had earlier. Land and buildings. Equipment. Uh, debtors. What else did I have earlier? Oh, bank. Okay, then let's add the liabilities. Loan. Creditors. Uh, let's add capital. And let's add drawings. Right, and then they'll give you an amount for these things. Okay, let's say land and buildings is 500. Equipment is 200. Debtors is 150. Bank, 50. The loan is a liability. Remember, liabilities have credit balances because of the credit plus. All of these, these are all assets. All of these assets have to follow this rule. Okay, debit plus. Debit plus. Debit plus. See that? Okay, here, credit plus. Credit plus. Credit plus. Okay, balances are on the plus side, positive side. Okay, something to consider. Right, so where would a balance be for an asset? On the debit side. Where would a balance be for liability? On the credit side. Where will a balance be for an income? On the credit side. Okay, that's why it's so important to know the rules, because they can even be used in a trial balance. Okay, because then, when you get given a list of accounts, okay, so I'm creating a question, okay? Uh, let's say this is 30, the creditors, 80, the capital, 200, the drawings, 60. Okay, so I've given you some amounts here. Okay, you obviously need to interpret what these amounts are, right? So, land and buildings, assets. No, drawings. Where's the plus for drawings? On the debit side. Okay, so these are balances. These are balances for different accounts. Okay, that's an asset, that's an asset, that's an asset, that's an asset. This is a liability. This is a liability. Capital is capital, drawings is drawings. Right, so this is what did they give you. Okay, you need to know what they've given you. Right, this is the question. I'm just creating the question as we go. I'm discussing it. Okay. Then you will have another section. Okay, let me add a line here. Just to put a heading here. Financial position section. Okay, then you'll have a nominal accounts section. Okay, this, is, this used to be called the balance sheet account section. Okay, but that's just the old names for these things. Okay, so nominal account section. What do you have in this section? Um, let me just copy this and paste it there. Okay, when you look at the nominal account section. There is no other name for that. Okay, what accounts are you going to see here? You're going to see the other two, income and expenses. And now you've got them all. Okay, we started off by saying there are six different accounts. Assets, liabilities, income expenses, capital drawings. There are the six accounts. Okay. All right, so let me give you a few here. Sales, cost of sales. Rent income, interest 
received water and electricity stationery packing material uh, wages okay that's enough let's keep it simple okay I need to put some figures here and I need to make them tie up so uh, the sales let's make that 300 the cost of sales let's make that 100 the rent income 150 interest received 80 water and electricity 20 stationery 30 packing material 40 okay I need to just total all of this up just to make sure it works out okay debits and credits have to add up uh, okay so I need to make this one bigger okay it's fine uh, let's make the wages 15 okay let's sum up this side okay make this side equal to that side okay the sales I'm gonna have to change I'm just going to make this bigger, make it 400. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, so this is a trial balance. Okay, so when you do a trial balance, you'll be given these things separately, and then you just need to put them in this format. That's all. Okay, financial position, nominal accounts. Assets, liabilities, capital drawings go here. Income and expenses go here at the bottom. Okay, this is an income. This is an income. This is an income. This is an expense. This is an expense. That is an expense. That is an expense. That is an expense. Okay, so now you have. Um, and then the one plus is the total of the. It's the debits and credits. That's all. Okay, so when you are working out a trial balance, okay, the trial balance needs to have debits equal to the credits okay if I add up all of these amounts I'm gonna get that total if I add up all of these amounts I'm gonna get that total huh yeah the totals have to be the same okay see if I sum up all of this I get that um, the sales the sales should be this minus 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 there okay that's better okay so you can check it if you add up all of this uh, I don't know if you can see it here at the bottom there one four five six one four six five one four six five if I add up all of this there's it there the sum one four six five okay so this adds up to one four six five this adds up to 1465. Get okay, the trial balance. Okay, everything needs to add up. Right, so when you are looking at financial statements, what must you be given? A trial balance. Okay, you need a trial balance before you do the financial statements. Okay, there's no other way of doing it. Okay, because this is the accounting cycle. Step one. Step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5, and step 6. Okay, step 6 is, is what you're asking me to go through. Income statements, balance sheets, okay, the, the disclosure part of it, right? Okay, so this trial balance will be given in a question. Okay, so here's my question. You are given the above trial balance. A. Create a income statement. And B. Create a statement of financial position. Okay. Income statement. That's the old name. New name. 
Statement of Comprehensive Income. I wrote the long name at the top, just writing the short name here at the bottom. Okay. All right, so here's a test question. Trial balance. Now, now that we understand what a trial balance is, this needs to be given to you that you have to have. Okay, so the examiner will give you that. Statement of financial position section here. Assets, liabilities, capital drawings, and then income and expenses here at the bottom. You've got a debit column, and you've got a credit column. That's what you've got. All right, so what must I do? Let's look at fir the first one. Statement of financial, uh, statement of comprehensive income, income statement. So let's just get the heading. Here's my heading. Okay, this would have been question A. Okay, now I'm going to create the answer. Okay, there's my heading. Right, what does the statement look like? Well, the format you need to study. The format will be given to you in your textbook. Okay, check your textbook and study the formats. Okay, that you just need to go and learn. Okay, I'm going to use a simple format. Okay, you use the format that's in your textbook. Okay, but the format will be similar, but just a little bit different. Okay, so what does the format look like? Well, you always start with income at the top, but you start with sales. Okay, sales and cost of sales. Gross profits. Okay, this is the format. Okay, sales I need. Cost of sales, I need. I need those two things. Okay, so go to your trial balance. Where are my sales? Here. Where are my cost of sales? Here. Okay, those two I'm going to look at. Okay, and I'm going to put them in. How much were my sales? 925. How much were my cost of sales? 400. Okay, in accounting, you have to show negatives in brackets okay so cost of sales i need to less cost of sales less means subtract okay so if i put a i can't put brackets in excel if i put a bracket it's going to make it a minus look bracket 400 minus 400 okay but it's a negative okay you show it in brackets Okay, then you grab your calculator and you subtract this minus that. What is the gross profit? 525. Okay, then what else do I need to show? I need to show other income. Do I have any other income here? Yes, I do. Here's other income. Rent income and interest received. Okay, so other income, rent income, and interest received. Okay, how much rent income did I have? 150. How much interest received did I have? 80. Okay, I'm just adding up all the other income. Okay, you can show this differently. In, in certain textbooks, that they, they separate the financing, so they have interest as a separate financing cost. Okay, we'll look at your examples just now. Okay, but I'm just giving you a simple statement of profit and loss of other comprehensive income. I'm just grouping things into big categories. Other income and then other expenses. You can have different categories just to add different levels of detail. Okay, but it is what it is. Okay, other income. How much other income did I have? Two. So my other income is going to be how much? Add up these two figures. This plus that gives me 230. Okay, there's my other income. That's a positive. Right, other expenses. What expenses do I have? Here are the expenses. Uh, let me put the color in. Why not? Okay. Here are the expenses. Okay.
Okay, so other expenses. What do I have? Water and electricity, salaries, uh, stationery, packing material, wages. Okay, let's put in the amounts. Water and electricity, 20. Stationery, 30. Packing material, 40. Wages, 15. Alright, how much other expenses do I have? Well, add up all of them. 105. Okay, that's going to be a negative again. Why? It's an expense. You're going to subtract it. Okay, I can't show this in brackets, but if you're writing this out, you show that in brackets. 105 in brackets. I'm just showing the negative there. Okay, then at the end... You calculate net profit or profit for the year, profit slash loss for the year. Okay, right at the end, I need to tally up. Okay, so my gross profits plus my other income minus my other expenses gives me 605. This is the profit for the year. Okay, so this company is doing well. This company is making more income than expenses. Okay, that's a profit. Profits, income minus expenses. Okay, when income is greater than expenses. But right, you can have a loss. The last same thing, income minus expenses, but expenses are greater than income. Okay, so you can either have a profit or a loss. It just depends on what they give you. Okay, I obviously gave you a company that's doing well. Right, let's look at B. Create a statement of financial position. Okay, where's my heading? Okay, it's fine. I can take this heading. It's okay. Okay, let's paste that there. Right, so for B, statement of financial position. Right, again, go learn your format. Okay, I'm going to give you the basic format. You'll have a section for assets. Assets are broken up into non-current... Non-current assets and current assets. Okay. Right, then you'll have total assets. Okay, again, format. I'm giving you a very basic format. Go study the format that you've been given in your textbook and just use it. Should be similar though. Okay, then you have equity and liabilities. Here's the next section. Okay, in this section, you'll have a section for equity. And then you'll have a section for liabilities. Okay, the liabilities will be broken up into non-current and current. Okay, and then at the bottom... We have a total, total equity and liabilities. All right, so let's go complete this part of the question. Okay, let's go up to the top. I've looked at all of these. This is done. Income and expenses complete. Income and expenses go here. Statement of comprehensive income. Now I need to look at this. Financial position section, land and buildings, what is it? An asset. What asset? Long term or short term? Long term. Land and buildings. How much were the land and buildings? 500. Then I've got equipment, 200. Equipment is also... A 
long-term assets. 200. Go back up. That one I've looked at. That one I've looked at. Debtors. Debtors is a short-term asset. 150. Debtors. What else do I have? Bank. What is bank? An asset. It's short term. 50. Ah, oh, not debtors. What did I say? Bank. Yeah. We looked at debtors. Okay. Bank. Short term, 50. Okay. So there's your assets and you've split it into non-current and current. So, non-current assets. Current assets. How do I get the total? Add. Current assets, same thing. Add. Okay, so now I've got the totals. You see that? Still following? Okay. Can I get my total assets? Yes, I can. Add up again. Non-current plus current, 900 assets. Okay, so now I know how much assets this whole company has. This company has 900. It could be 900,000, it could be 900 million, it could be 900 billion, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just keeping the amount small so we can work with them. Okay, just look at your question and see what unit of measurement is given. Is it millions, is it thousands, what is it? Okay. Right, then we need to do this next section, equity and liabilities. Okay, so equity will have capital. Remember, capital is what the owner has. And capital will be capital plus profit or minus the loss. Did I have a profit here? I did. So I don't, I'm going to put the minus loss. And then minus drawings. Okay, that's how you work out equity. Okay, it could have been this if there was a loss. If there was a loss, then there wouldn't be a profit. Then you would just subtract it instead of adding it. Right, so let's work that out. Let's show the working. What was my capital? Let's go look. Capital 200. See that? Okay, what was my profit? There's it, 650. See that? Okay, go back. Where's my drawing? 60. Minus drawing 60. Close brackets. Okay, there's my working. Add and subtract. Get an answer. Answer is 790. There's my equity. Equity, 790. Okay, now I need to work out my liabilities, the section covering liabilities, non-current and current. Let's go back to the top. Okay, this, this, these are all, I've looked at all of these. These ones I need to look at. Loan, creditors, capital and drawings I've looked at as well. Okay, the last two, loans and creditors. Loan, 30, creditors, 80. The loan we can assume is long term. The creditors is always short term. Ooh, I need to replace these words. I just copy pasted. Okay, don't write current assets. Okay, it's the same as, as the top, just with a different word. Okay, liabilities instead of assets. Right, so I've got non current here and I've got current there. Creditors. Okay, so the loan. What was the loan? How much? Let's go look. The loan was 30. The creditors was 80. Okay, so loan 30. Creditors 80. Okay, so my non-current liabilities...
and my current liabilities. Okay, 30 there, 80 there. Okay, no need to add there. Right, so my liabilities. How much were my li how much are my liabilities? Yes. Okay. So now all I need to do is just add up these two figures. Okay, this figure and that figure will be added to get this amount. Okay, total equity liabilities. Where's my equity? There. Where's my liabilities? There. What do I get? 900. And if you've done it correctly, total assets must equal total equity and liabilities. Why? Because of the accounting equation. A equals O plus L. Right, and that's financial statements. Okay, you need a trial balance, you need to interpret the information, and you need to put it to the right place. Okay, we've done both. We've done the statement of comprehensive income, and we've done the statement of financial position. Okay, it's important you know how to draw these things up. Make sense?